how I thought antiquaries, historians, and archaeologists. Today, we're going to talk about a new theory, because I know exactly why there are three chambers in the Great Pyramid, the underground chamber, the Queen's chamber, and the King's chamber. I know exactly why this is so. And you're going to say, Charles, you don't know anything. And about some things, I don't know anything. But about this, I know what I'm talking about. Now, here we have a totem pole. Let's call this fellow Jack, named after the beanstalk, because these things were quite tall in the old days. And you see, they're one on top of the other. Three, just like in the Great Pyramid, three chambers. Underground, queens, kings. Underground, the giant, queens, kings. Hell, Middle Earth, us, gods, Asgard. If you see my totem pole video, you'll see exactly how worldwide totem poles work. They often follow this profile, one thing stacked on another, one world stacked on another. And I believe we're seeing this in the Great Pyramid. It, the Great Pyramid is truly fascinating. Now, how do I begin to explain how it works and, and how this theory of the Great Pyramid works? Because this is it, guys. Well, basically, I'll explain it now. This is how it works. Um, the giant lives in the underground chamber. The underground chamber, as we know, is unfinished. Everyone says, oh, it's unfinished because they changed their mind. They moved upwards and uh, then, then they wanted to build a bigger pyramid than a platform. They, they built the king's chamber. They moved upwards. They kept changing their mind. No, 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 no. Clearly, clearly it was built like that, right? This is not changing mind. No, 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 no. This is, this is not right. No, it was built like that. So how do we explain it all? Well, we should use mythology to explain it because mythology is the old religion. And it, 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 I wonder why we aren't using world mythology to explain pyramids, which are worldwide, a worldwide phenomenon. And we can use the fallen angel story because that is exactly what the pyramid represents. Lost technology, the fallen angel who came to help humans living at Middle Earth. So how it works is this. The giant, um, basically, um, here's what happened. The giant was thrown out of heaven and he crashed into earth, right? Making a kind of crater. Um, so he kind of lives underground. He was very bad in heaven. Those who have watched Monkey Magic know what I'm talking about. The Asian version of this legend, the stone monkey Thoth, basically, a stone monkey, right? And what happened was, um, when he got to earth, he saw all these humans here. And the humans were already built in his image, or he built them in his own image. And then he said, well, I can't just leave you like this. I'll give you technology so you can be better than the animals. I'll give you fire. And the gods were so angry because they were creating on Middle Earth a replica of the gods above. And they decided to punish him. So they locked him underground for a long time. They put a heap of rubble on top of him, a pyramid. And uh, he, had, he was punished by having acid dripping on him. And his wife would um, catch it in a bucket, but when she had to go empty the bucket, he starts going, ah, causing earthquakes. And this is why uh, earthquakes are just periodic, but not all the time. This was probably taught to children in the Stone Ages. And so now we can see the layout of the Great Pyramid, which was obviously designed to encapsulate this, because a pyramid to me seems to be a replacement for a world tree. World tree in the center of the world on top of a mountain. The Great Pyramid is geodetically located and also a ge geodetic marker of the Earth in honor of the fallen astronaut now living underground. So the Great Pyramid has an underground chamber unfinished. Why? Because it's supposed to represent the underground, the un like a cave underground. It's not supposed to have perfectly straight walls. That's why it's unfinished. That explains it, guys. And also, we don't, they don't really want him to stay there to be punished there. Um, so they want him to go back to Asgard to rule over all the other gods as a, as a reward for helping humanity on Middle Earth, giving us the technology that the Great Pyramid represents. So what do they do? Uh, they want him to go up the uh, ascending shaft, uh, up the Grand Gallery and into the King's Chamber, bypassing the Queen's Chamber, Middle Earth. Now the Queen's Chamber, we know it's got the curved roof, which in Arabic tombs was for a female, right? For a woman. 
and that would be the mother goddess who rules over Earth. We don't want him to go back to Earth, we want him to go to Asgard, right? So, what, uh, what I've noticed uh, when I was reading um, um, a 1970s book on the pyramids, so a, a, a brilliant book, everyone watching uh, should read it, by Thompson, Secrets of the Great Pyramid. He actually said that the, uh, there, are, there are holes, and we know there are holes in the ascending grand gallery. And he says this was probably for a wooden platform or wooden steps, but they would have covered up the entrance to the middle chamber. So you could go up out of the bottom chamber and into the top chamber or back down again, but with those wooden planks in place, you wouldn't go into the middle earth. Earth was barred from access, middle earth, right? The queen's chamber, no. We already have the mother goddess ruling over that area, right? Hathor in Egypt, I suppose. So, how do we explain this? We want the fallen angel to go up out of the, uh, the, uh, the underground chamber where he's being punished into Asgard. And that is the reason for the whole layout of the Great Pyramids, why these are stacked on top of each other, underneath the apex of the pyramid, it represents a, a kind of a tree frozen in time, a world tree frozen in time. By being made of stone, by being monumental, by being a mountain, it's a world tree inside the mountain. It's the, and that's why he's asleep, you see, he's a sleeping god. They say King Arthur uh, sleeps until England will need him again. Same with Frederick Barbarossa, same with Buddha, sleeping. Uh, and, and, and they're on a tree as well. They're associated with a tree, a tree of knowledge. That is what is going on in the Great Pyramid. Now there's more. Because this god helped mankind, he's a technology god. So now we come to the sarcophagus in the king's chamber, which represents Asgard. Now this is, the sarcophagus uh, is, is just um, fascinating. It actually represents, it was found to represent a British unit time multiplied by four, which I'll write uh, in the, in, right here. It's, I'm writing it right here. And uh, which I read in uh, Tompkins' Secrets of the Great Pyramid. The people who worked out all these measurements were John Taylor in the late 19th century, Piazzi Smith, who took measurements, Flinders Petrie was seen to refute Piazzi Smith, um, uh, but this is not true at all. He did not refute Piazzi Smith, he just took different measurements. He didn't quite say Piazzi Smith's uh, measurements were wrong. And these luminaries took many Great Pyramid measurements, which were used in geodetic analysis of the Great Pyramid, because since ancient times it was known that the Great Pyramid represented Earth. So this was a tribute. The Great Pyramid was a tribute to the fallen angel, the fallen astronaut. And that, arc, that, that sarcophagus is the Ark of the Covenant. That story is older than, than the Bible, way older than the Bible, but it was copied over time, applied to the Jews. And that story is his technology in Asgard, in the king's chamber, that he, that is his promise. That is his promise to humanity, that, that he gave us this technology, Knum, gave us this sarcophagus, this Ark of the Covenant, Ark of the Promise. Ark, look it up in an Egyptian dictionary, it's an Egyptian word for box. This is what the, the, the Egyptians used it long before the Jews. The Jews got it from the Egyptians. They got this story from the Egyptians. That is the lost technology that was given to mankind. This whole pyramid is representative of the technology we have learned. It's saying to the fallen astronaut, we have learned from you. Look at the measures we have placed in the Great Pyramid. I mentioned earlier in my live video, the inch is geodetic. It's 500 million of a pole to pole. Um, it is just absolutely extraordinary uh, what the Egyptians were able to do, the pre-Egyptians, whoever built the Great Pyramid. Um, and it is obviously a, a, a memorial to the fallen astronaut. That is the lay, that is the reason for the layout of the Great Pyramid, uh, the, the, the chambers. You need to know about totem poles to explain the Great Pyramid. These totem poles are found across Eurasia, usually with one, two, three. The giant's a bit bigger because he's, he's below. And that it kind of explains it. Um, there is, there is more to this. Now, I, I, I didn't quite know all of these facts back in 2015 when I wrote my uh, origin of the pyramids, but I said, indeed, it was the pyramids are for Knum, because there is a guy called Knum Kuf, no one knows who he is, the, sarco the, uh, the, the, uh, the, um, the, uh, the thing in the oval, the cartouche is for Knum Kuf. Um, why, no one knows who that is. Is it Kuf for being a megalomaniac, saying, I am Knum, possibly? But no one knows what it is, but this is the God who created man on the potter's wheel, the God of technology. And the, the, the Great Pyramid is saying, we venerate you, we thank you, give fertility and life and abundance and knowledge 
to all of Egypt. That's why they place it in the center of the Nile, the center of Egypt, because it's a world tree, a world mountain, a world mountain range, uh, like Mount Meru, uh, the Indian version. That's what it's supposed to be. That's why they were white. The pyramids were white. Newgrange is white because it's supposed to be the top of a mountain, the snow. You see the snow. This story might have originated in the Himalayas, the world mountain idea. I mean, this is incredible. I didn't know all these details, the relation to the totem pole when I wrote this book, but the book still stands. That's a fantastic book explaining the origin and the lost gods of Giza Knum, basically, the fallen angel. Uh, this is um, stupendous, fascinating, wonderful. Uh, I think I've come to the end of explaining how the Great Pyramid works, but look, there are more. It goes, this, this, this goes back in time, way back in time. For example, Gebekli Tepe, buried like a pyramid, and full of flints. They put lots of flints in there. Why? A memento to show the fallen astronaut who's living in there, look, look at our technology. 10,000 years ago, all these flints, you did this for us. Thank you. Look at the Pyramid of Zosa. Underneath the Pyramid of Zosa, no one can explain why there's all this pottery underneath the Pyramid of Zosa. No one can explain this. Well, it's technology. That, that pottery, uh, the early dynastic pottery and the pre-dynastic pottery that's under there, I believe it's mostly first and second dynasty pottery that's under a third dynasty pyramid, a mountain of it, in those chambers in that labyrinth. No one, no one can explain it. It's technology, isn't it? It's to say to the fallen angel, look, look at the technology you've done for us. Thank you. This is what you've done for us. We give it back to you. Thank you so much. You're the best. Look at, look at what you've done for us that separates us from the beasts. Uh, we are separated from the beasts by our hands, but also uh, our feet, but also by the technology that you've given us when you fell from heaven. That explains the pyramid, explains the layout of the chambers. It's a model of the earth. Um, von Däniken also said something similar to this. The, the Asian pagoda, padoga, pagoda, is a world tree. It looks like a world tree. It's very tall. It's a skyscraper, basically. Uh, the Irish did something similar with their skyscrapers a thousand years ago, their round towers, basically a world tree again. Um, and what he said was the relieving chambers don't actually seem to relieve anything, but they look like the top of an, of an Asian pagoda, right? It's, it's a multi-roof thing like a Chinese pagoda. Why? And von Däniken was, I believe, the first one to say this. I didn't know he actually said that before. I, I was saying something similar. And I didn't know he said that before I read his Eyes of the Sphinx. But that's what he says. And... If that is so, we have the world tree representation of a pagoda inside the Great Pyramid, which proves it's a world tree, which proves it's a totem pole, which is also a world tree, explaining the three chambers. One, two, three. That's it, guys. That explains the Great Pyramid. Unbelievable. I can't believe we finally come to this conclusion. This is going to be accepted worldwide absolutely instantaneously. Nah, it probably won't. Oh, well. But what do you think about this theory? Anyway, cheers.